Hey guys, Lodricus here with a full completion walkthrough for the Tartarus key. This released on the 31st of May 2023. It was developed by Vertical Reach and published by Armored Game Studios. It can be found in the Xbox and PlayStation stores from anywhere between $15 to $20. It's an escape room style puzzle game with a jigsaw movie twist as the other people's lives within the puzzles are in your hands. The full completion should take you roughly two hours, following along with my guide and completing both playthroughs. There's a total of 16 achievements or trophies to get. In the first playthrough we're going to pick up the two good endings by saving everybody, as well as two of the missable achievements for finding all the rooms and all optional conversations. The second playthrough is a little quicker as we'll be killing everybody off and getting the bad ending. So let's jump into it. To move around just use your left and right analog sticks, A to interact with objects and the left bumper allows you to sprint. You can change it to a toggle sprint in the options if you find holding left bumper is a little tricky. But let's get straight into the game and let's talk you through what we need to do to get the full completion. I'm going to go through this as quick as I can so I'm going to be skipping all dialogue by mashing A. There is quite a lot of dialogue in this game. So if you wanted to take your time and go through it, just keep pausing the video where needed. Interact with this walkie talkie by pressing A on it. And then after a bit of dialogue, I'm then going to choose one of the achievements. This is one of the missable achievements called chatty, and this is to trigger many optional conversations. To do this, I'm just going to interact with an object in this room. This is then going to pop up the prompt with X, which is shown here to trigger an optional conversation. So just in a moment, I'm going to walk over to this bookcase and interacting with these books would trigger an optional conversation. I think the intention here would be to then move on and keep searching different areas of the room, getting loads of these optional conversations and get this during the full playthrough. However, I'm just going to keep using this bookshelf over and over again. So just spamming A to examine it and then every so often you'll get the prompt to press X for the optional conversation with Torres. Just keep rinsing and repeating this for three to four minutes and you should get the achievement called Chatty pop up. I'm going to let this play through in real time and then once that's popped I will proceed through with the puzzle. So this will be the last piece of dialogue I need for chatty and then we can proceed on with the puzzles and solutions without having to search the rest of the rooms for optional dialogue. So we're going to open the safe next. The code for the safe is 7341. So that is 7341. That's then going to spit out a key which we need to pick up with A and then we can open this door to proceed through to the master bedroom. As we get into the bedroom, what we need to do here is pick up five vials or portions of various colors. And I'll show you where they are right now. 
So there's one here in the bottom left by the paintings, which is the white one. There's one here underneath this painting beside the clock, the red one, and then a yellow one beside the bedside table. And then on the dresser itself, there is a green bottle. And then in this middle left drawer is a black one. We then need to place them in a particular order on this stand. So the first object we need to place is black. My inventory bugged out here, so I had to place a white one before picking it back up and then placing black. After that, it's then yellow. The third one is the white one. And then the fourth one is red and then finally green. If placed correctly in order, this drawer below should open up and give us the key to move on to the next room. So we're just going to open through this door and head on through. And we're going to have a bit of a dialogue or a cutscene here where Torres is trapped and she's going to be banging on the door for our attention. So we're going to head on down the corridor. Again, left bumper to run. Interact with the door. Again, another little cutscene. She's currently getting gassed in the room. Dying. So it seems like there's a race against time to get her out but don't worry you've got as much time as you need we're going to proceed to the bathroom next door then all you want to do here is line up the words on the mirror with the ones on the wall to spell out reveal a little bit of dialogue and the painting swings down however when we turn around it hasn't so we're just going to interact with the painting on the wall this is going to reveal a weakness in the wall however we don't have the tools just yet to break through here there is an option to save or injure Torres. So before doing this, what I'm going to do is make a manual save, but I'll show you that when we get to it. So we've interacted with the painting. It's revealed the hole in the wall. We're then going to get another little cut scene where a mirrored self on the other side of the mirror actually throws an axe at us. And then we're going to use that axe to break through either the wall or the front door, depending on which savior option you want. So once we pick the axe up at this next sequence, what we're going to do is do a manual save and just save that into slot one. And then what we're going to do is break through the wall, first of all. This is going to count as saving Torres. And then we're going to reload our save and then go through the door, which is going to injure her. So just making a manual save. Once we pick the axe up, put it into slot one and then resume game. And then we're going to interact with the cracked wall. And then this is going to give us the saviour for Torres. And then once this cutscene's played out, all I'm going to do is press start and then load that previous save that we just made. And we're going to go out the bathroom and through the front door. So the achievements pop there, press start, go to load and then load up in slot one, the bathroom. There is also a nice auto save just before that as well. So we've got the axe. We're just going to head out the front door this time. And then we're going to interact with the door of her room. It's going to give us the option to attack it and break it. We're just going to keep saying yes each time. However, us going through the front door has increased the gas coming into the room and it's actually knocked Torres out this time and she's slightly injured. Don't worry, this doesn't have a knock-on effect for the true ending or anything. You can't actually kill Torres, you can only injure her. So don't worry too much, we are going to proceed through the story from this point. So in a second she'll wake up and we'll get the achievement for hurting her called doing my best. And then what we're going to do is just do a quick 180 and head out the door. Now that's popped, we're just going to backtrack the way we came, past the door we came through, and then down this corridor now, the door at the end is open. We're just going to run towards that door and go through. Go into a slightly larger room with two floors. Once in here, we're going to go down the staircase to our right hand side. And at the bottom of the staircase, you want to take a left. I turned right here towards the front door, but we're going to take a left. And we'll get a quick cutscene with Torres, and we'll pick it back up after the cutscene's played out.
At this point, Torres will then give us a map. You can open the map by pressing the back button or menu button on the Xbox controller. Don't really need to use the map at all, but there is an achievement related to finding all the rooms. We're going to then head out of here and take our first left through to this door. And we are looking for the library, which is on our left hand side here. This is going to have a couple of puzzles before then reaching Charles to save. You don't need to interact with anything other than the display case here on the left. The order of triggering this one is to press the paintbrushes first, then the flail, then the machete on the left hand side, and then the hammer and needle in the middle, and then finally the watch on the right hand side. That's going to open this glass case. We can then pick up the statues. And then a bookcase will be revealed on the left hand side, which we need to slide the books across. So on the top row of this bookshelf, you just need to interact with it once to slide one book across and then the middle shelf six times. So you get six books to the other side and then the bottom shelf is three. So just press A three times and that should open the door. Once we get into another large room, the gallery, which it is called, we'll tick off another room off our list of walking into. As it says map updated there in the top left. And then in the very corner of the room, there is a set of paintings stacked against the wall. We just need to head over and press A on those. And then behind us, those will then appear on the wall. We then need to press these buttons in a particular order so all the lights on their eyes light up. So we're going to press the middle one first, which is the angel. And then the minotaur, which is the far right button. And then we're going to press the llama or lima, I think it's called, which is on the far left. And then with the knight, which is the middle right. And then the demon on the middle left. And that's going to light them all up. Once we turn around, there's going to be five statues behind us now with various patterns underneath them. Just copy what I'm going to do here. That's the same every time. You don't need to press X to accept these chatty optional conversations anymore as we do have the achievement. However, I hadn't quite got it on this run just yet. So on the left hand side statue, you want to change that to kind of a, a devil kind of looking symbol. These are going to be hard to explain. The next one is a triangle with a couple of lines underneath it. The middle one is always correct with the two Z's and then this one is like two moons. And then finally, this one should be like a little stick person with hands and legs. So once that puzzle's been solved, two doors will open. This main one that'll take us back into the lobby where we started. And then the door on the opposite side with red curtains will open as well. In that doorway on the opposite side, we will find Charles. So head straight over. And as you get to the door, we'll get a bit of a cutscene. In this room, Charles is in a bit of a pickle. He's getting absorbed or pulled into some sort of demonic wall. A bit creepy, but we won't ask any further questions. There is a number of symbols that we're going to need to use to do a ritual to save Charles here. There is five symbols scattered throughout the room. We just need to interact with those and then speak to Charles briefly before solving the puzzle. However, we are going to do a manual save here before we actually solve the puzzle because we do want Charles to die as well as live. So first of all, we're going to go for the good ending. So we're going to save him. There's one symbol behind this painting as you first come in. There is optional dialogue here, which I have opened up, but you don't need to. On the floor here in the corner is another sigil. And then on the roof in the middle of the room is another one. So just above us, blind as a bat and dead ahead here, just beside this bookcase. And then the final one, the fifth one is directly behind us amongst the books. Hard to see this one, but is on the floor underneath this painting. There we go. And then once we've got all five, we can then go forward and solve the puzzle. So pick the book up in the middle of the room, the journal. And then we're going to speak to Charles, who's currently stuck in the wall. So head over to him, just press A and rinse through all the dialogue with him. It gives you the answers to the sigils and solutions and things. But I'm going to just walk you through it nice and simple. 
So here we're going to do a manual save. So just press start, go to save and you can put it in slot one. We don't need the Torres save anymore. We can save over that one perfectly fine. And then to do the puzzle, we're going to select the south one first of all. This one needs to be the Ramu symbol. So whichever one represents Ramu, which is that one there. And then we're going to go to the East Sigil location. And in this one, we want the Bifrons Sigil. So pop that one there. And then on the West side, we want the Maltheus one, which is this one, a giant stalk. And then finally, the North Sigil we need to complete the puzzle is the Andromalthius one. It's just the one with a big cross through it. So once you put those four in place, Charles is going to then say, does this look right? Do you, are you sure? We're just going to go yes, because this is the correct solution and it should save Charles. Whatever you do, do not save over that save slot number one. We're going to use that for the second playthrough and this is going to be our starting point to then go on and kill all the characters. So if you're making any further saves going forward, make sure you save them in slot two or three. Make sure you save one is kept intact. So once this cutscene's played out and Charles joins Torres in the main lobby area, you'll get the achievement pop for history lesson for saving Charles. that out the way we're now going to move on to save Ruth we've also got the lion key which is going to open the doors in this mansion area which have the line on the front so we're going to go through that same door that we came through you're going to head through around this corner and we'll find a door with a line on it this is now going to open and we have a caretaker's cupboard on the right hand side with a keypad on it just double tap left bumper if you need to turn on your torch Interact with the keypad and the code for the keypad here is going to be 2940. So that is 2940. Once you've done that, there will be another door directly behind it. This time this puzzle's made up of playing card symbols. So you want the first one to be a spade, second one to be a heart, diamond, spade again, and then diamond and that should open the next door. This one, we want the pattern to be from the top left, blue, red, red, and then yellow, yellow, red, and then red, blue, yellow. Behind this door is one final puzzle. I don't have an instant solution for this one, but what you need to do is turn the rings. What we're trying to do here is make the logo of the game, kind of the Tartarus key logo, which is the letter A with an I in the middle of it. So all you need to do is keep rotating these rings in circles until they all line up correctly. If somebody does have a quick solution, feel free to put it in the comments below for other people's reference. But I'm just going to let this play out until I've solved the puzzle. I'm just going to be working my way through these rings until they all click together correctly. Now that I've finally got the puzzle solved, the final door comes down and there is a doctor's note behind it or an appointment card for the doctor's clinic. Pick that up, 
and then we're going to head out the door we came in or so we thought everything's gone into like a dreamlike state behind us a couple of footprints to follow and then we eventually get a cut scene and a door to walk through so once we've gone through the door we'll then proceed with the puzzles We're then back on the main corridor just outside the cleaners cupboard. Head forward and there is a door on the right hand side here with a convenient slot to post this appointment card through. And then we'll go into a puzzle room which is similar to a doctor's surgery. It has a model of a human body with the organs missing. What we want to do is go in here and find all the missing organs and put it together within the model. So head inside, we're going to take a right there's nothing we need to interact with on the left hand side just yet make sure you open all the cupboards and the drawers up in this one there is a liver make sure you pick that up right next to the liver is also a button if you press that this is going to slide this work top or unit to the right hand side a little bit revealing some dials on the floor what you want to do is line all these dials up so they're all facing upwards so all the arrow red arrows are connected a little bit of trial and error and you'll eventually crack it and then this is going to reveal a heart which can be found within the floor so that'll slide open and then grab the heart that appears we're still missing the lungs and the bladder so bottom drawer i think it is on this middle column here which will have the lungs in it and then the drawer on the right hand side in this table has the stomach sorry put all that in the organ model just by pressing a and then the top of the model's head will explode and a brain will be revealed grab the brain and then we're going to go to the other side of the room and there is a jar which we're going to plonk the brain in we're then going to have a little bit of a cut scene and when we turn back to the brain it is now a skull so we're going to pick up the skull and plunk it on the top of the skeleton and then what we need to do is arrange the skeleton in such a way that it matches the diagram on the first picture on our left hand side so just move his arms and legs into the correct positions that i'm doing here and then once you've got them exactly the same as what i've got the door to our right hand side should open where we will find ruth i'll pick up the commentary once the door is open As we move on into the next room, Ruth's in a little bit of trouble because she has been poisoned and we need to create an antidote for her. It is possible to kill her by accident. So before injecting or making the antidote, I will do a manual save, which you'll see shortly. So once this cutscene's played out, there'll be a few things that we have to pick up before we can make the antidote. So once Ruth's rolled onto the bed, we'll have a quick dialogue with Torres. Just letting her know the situation. There's a computer there, which I don't believe we actually use. So once that's played out and we get control again, we're going to pick up the stethoscope on the floor. Don't think it's necessary for this solution, but I pick it up anyway. And then to the left of the stethoscope on the top here is some chemicals. We do need these, so pick those up. And then the bottom drawer of this desk has some needles in it. So just interact with those, pick those up. And then we're going to use the needles here on Ruth. And this is going to take a blood sample. So yes, I want to use an inventory item, select the needles, and this is going to get a blood sample for us. The poison seems to have taken hold. It's just got a nice green arm now. 
so once we've got those the last ingredient that we need is behind us behind this cupboard or bookcase before we can move the bookcase what you'll need to do is interact with the scrapes on the wall so these scrapes here just to the left of the bookcase press a on those i press it on it twice here and then press on the bookcase and then it should give you the option to move it move it across and there is a little void behind here with the dead person and then in their hands we will find another element of the antidote so just interact with those we'll get a scribbly note and we'll also get a blue chemical like a teal colored one so now that we've got all elements for the antidote i'm going to press start and do a manual save here we're going to save that into slot two we don't want to override that first slot in the lounge and then resume because it is possible to accidentally kill her here so we're going to interact with the centrifuge here and we're going to put that vial that we got last which is the blue teal one once this device has run through it's then going to give us a nice blue vial which we're going to use to make the antidote with and it tells us the quantities that we need to make the antidote as well so we're going to go to the mixing table here the beakers on the left hand side yes we want to synthesize and here we want to put in her blood it's then going to give us the option to put something else in. We're going to get that blue one, which we just got in, the Tau Blue Chemical. And then, yes, we want to add a third element, which is the Alpha Red Chemical. So we want her blood, the Tau Blue, and the Red Alpha. Once all those are in, we don't want to add anything else, so just select No, and that should hopefully give us the antidote. We're then just going to jab that in Ruth's arm, and she should wake up throwing up and not die so just go down and select the antidote that we just created we don't want to stab her own blood back into her and then if you've done this correctly you should say save ruth if for whatever reason you do accidentally kill her just go back to that manual save and just retrace your steps copying exactly what i did in the guide i'll pick this commentary back up once we've got the cutscene with ruth out the way Now that we've got the achievement elementary for saving Ruth, we're now gonna move on and find William. So head back out into this main lobby area. We're gonna go up one floor. And then we're gonna take our right and go through this door here on the right hand side with the blue carpet. This is the east wing, which we just discovered. If we take our first left, we'll come into this bedroom here, master bedroom. This puzzle revolves around this projector in the middle of the room. Before we can turn it on, we'll need to get a slide, which can be found in this cupboard on the left-hand side. The code for this cupboard is 1925, so 1925. Head inside, you'll get the option for an additional dialogue. You don't need to press that if you've already got the chatty achievement. On the floor, just in front of this outline of a door, is the slide that we're going to need for the projector. So just look on the floor and make sure you pick that up. Once you have that, just pop that slide into the projector and that's going to display some numbers on the screen. Behind us, once this is played out, there will be a little puzzle built into the dressing table. What you need to do is just move the first two columns twice. So if column one, press A twice. Column two, press A twice, and then column three, we want to press it once. 
and then we should be able to get the slides and the statues out of here. So make sure you pop the slide into the projector. This is going to produce an outline of the door or the locked door that we're trying to get through. Now that's displaying the doorway. We can interact with this board in front of it. This is going to place all three statues in a line. And then we need to arrange these in a way to block or create a shadow over that doorway. So just in order of height from front to back. So the shortest one to the highest one in the middle central column. And that should grey out the door or shadow out the door. And then as we go back into this room, we'll get a nice little cutscene and we'll be able to walk through the door. Once that cutscene's played out, we'll be able to walk into the planetarium. This one has got a, quite a large puzzle in the very middle of the room. So head in and you'll get this marked off as being updated on the map. And then we're going to interact with the central console. We need to match up some of the star systems here, but I'm going to walk you through the numbers and what you need to do. Skip through this and then we're going to head over to the console in the very middle after I played around with the bookshelf. So this first one here, which is the West button, just press the symbol in the middle and we'll be getting a list of numbers. We need to set this to six, five. That should be a picture of an eagle or bird. Lock that in and then press on this one for the north. The north is 2507, so that's 2507, and then lock that one in. Spin round, this is east. This one should be 0803, so 83. Set that to 83, and then lock that in as a little unicorn, a horse. And then on this side, which is the south, you want to set this to 11 or 8. And then lock that in. If done correctly, the key will be revealed on the wall, which is the peacock key. And this will allow us to go through the peacock doors. So we're just going to head straight over to that, pick it up and open the door directly next to it. Head on through. And then we're going to take a right, I believe, here which is going to take us back out onto the top level. And then as we come out of this door, we'll have a peacock door to our left. We do have a freaky corridor here, so just backtrack and then return. Otherwise, you'll be running forever. Sorry, on the right-hand side here is the peacock door as you come out. So open the peacock door and we will meet William. Here, we'll need to create William his favourite drink. If you create it incorrectly, he will die. So before making William his drink, I do suggest making a save in slot 2, just in case you accidentally kill him. So as you walk through the door, we'll get a cut scene with William. He's in a little bit of a predicament. He's got one of those jigsaw style collars on. So if you get this code incorrectly or do this incorrectly, you will get him killed with the collar. So to get the collar off, we're going to need to create his favourite drink, which is called Gumshoe. But before we can do that, we need to get all the ingredients together for him. So there is quite a lengthy bit of dialogue here. I will give you the optimal time to do a save. So once we've solved the puzzles and things, we'll then do a manual save before giving him the drink. Interact with the painting on the wall kind of reveals that there's something under the carpet beneath our feet another cut scene with William and then what we're going to do is look down to our feet and gives us the option to move the rug and then we need to make a circuit here so we need to make this circuit live in all four corners for it to work so just follow what I'm doing with this puzzle here and then once the circuit is live 
we'll be able to move on to the next part of the puzzle. Right, we now need to grab some more ingredients. So there is a little locked cupboard in this corner and the code for this cupboard is 5423. So that is 5423. Pick everything that you can get in here. So there'll be drinks, there'll be a bottle of water or empty bottle of water and then the coffee beans. Once you picked all of those up, interact with the water filter here. This will give us a note that we don't have any water, so we'll go and seek some water out in this phase. Interact with it to get some dirty water. And then we're going to head over to the water filter again and purify that water so it's nice and clean. And then before we start making the cocktail itself, what I'm going to do is a manual save slot into slot 2. So just press start once you've got the filtered water. Go to save and then save over surgery in slot two, as Ruth's been saved. And then once it's saved, interact with the coffee maker and we're gonna use the water and the coffee beans to make us some coffee. We now have everything that we need to make the cocktail. So we're gonna head over to the mixers on the right hand side and create that. So head over here. Yes, we want to make a drink and we're gonna make coffee with two parts. So make sure that you select two parts coffee and then we need whiskey which i believe is one part and then we need to add another ingredient yes which is the apple liqueur and we want to add one part of that so that should be two parts coffee one part whiskey and one part apple liqueur don't need to add anything more once you've done that and we should get question mark gumshoe it needs to be warm as well, so we're first going to use it on the fire to warm it, and we've now got hot gumshoe. Give that to William, and fingers crossed if you've made it correctly like you did in the guide here, you should get the achievement and William should survive. After this cutscene, we will go off and then save Kai. However, after saving Kai, we will be locked out of this main mansion section and moved elsewhere. So there is one room in here that you may have missed. It's a staircase. If you haven't found this staircase or discovered it, you will fail to get the cartographer achievement. So make sure you go off and grab this staircase before proceeding on with Kai. I will show you in the video shortly how to go and get that. So now we've got the achievement for saving William called The Music Was Nice. We're going to spin round and before we go off and save Kai, what we're going to do is go and find one of the staircases that is currently missing. All the other rooms in this mansion section are visited by going through and doing the puzzles. However, there is one staircase that you may have missed, which is behind a lion door. So if you take your first left, go down this green corridor. At the very end, there is a lion door, which we haven't gone through during this video yet. Step inside and you will discover the east stairway. That should now cover all the wings and the staircases and rooms, etc. in this part of the mansion. So we're then free to move on and rescue Kai. So as we come out into the top area of the mansion again, 
straight over and we're going to go down this red corridor the west wing this is where we originally came out of our room this door was boarded up and covered in blood it is now open we're going to go through this door and head down into a basement level and hopefully rescue kai so go on in down the staircase and we'll get a couple of cutscenes dialogues as we go down here Eventually, we'll go through the room at the very end, some sort of lab area, and they're doing some experimentation on people. The middle cylinder there, or container, has um, Kai in, which we need to save. The console, or the computer in the middle, requires a DNA sample before working. So first of all, we're going to turn to our right and pick up a cloth on top of this bench and then we're going to rub this nice clean cloth into the blood that's on the floor and that's going to give us the DNA sample that we need. So now we've got the bloodied cloth we just need to go back to that central console and interact with that. That's going to provide it with a blood sample and initiate a kind of lockdown which you'll soon see. So if we turn around this cupboard is now open behind us. We want to pick up the screwdriver and the keycard on the floor. There's also a third item we need in the cupboard just along from here. So open the doors on this cupboard. Examine the uniforms at the bottom and we'll also find a lighter in one of the pockets. We can now interact with the control panel and that's going to disable the lockdown. Once the lockdown has disabled, the tube on the left hand side, so not the one with Kai in, will purge and the body will drop out onto the floor. Don't worry, they're dead. They're not going to jump up and get you. And then we're going to try and open Kai's pod. So to do that, we need to interact with the panel underneath her feet. So I'll just skip through this dialogue. So there's a loose panel under Kai's feet at the very base of the pod. We're just going to interact with that and because we have the screwdriver we can take that off and there is a temperature sensor within here now if we interact with that we're then going to use the lighter that we've got to break it or fool it and then we can use the console again and that's going to also open kai's pod don't worry this section can't be failed hence i haven't done a manual save however kai is not quite out of the woods just yet and there is a little bit more work we need to do before they're freed. Like I've done with the other puzzles, when there is an option to potentially fail and kill somebody, I will give you the best time to do a manual save, just so you don't kill them by accident. So now that Kai's out the pod, we're then going to backtrack a little bit, and a couple of the doors that we passed earlier on are now open. So just head on out, and wander back down the corridor. The first room that we come to our right is kind of like a little cupboard section before another main room. Before we can interact with the painting behind us on the wall, what we need to do is interact with that piece of paper that's at the base of the door there. So just look down and pick that note up. We can then do a 180 and interact with the painting behind us. This is then going to reveal a keypad. In the keypad we need to type 6322 so that is 6322 and then that should open the door to the abattoir 6322 and then that will open the door here we have another puzzle in the abattoir itself there's a load of meat hanging from hooks however one of the pieces of meat has a key attached to it so there's a nice bright red key which you should see shortly what we need to do is get that from this side of the room right to the other side through this kind of puzzle so what we need to do is push meat out the way they're all slide in various directions and we just need to arrange them in a way that we can get the meat through so I believe this is probably the quickest solution that I'm about to show you I have been through this a couple of times so just copy what I'm doing here for the quickest solution. And then once we get the meat to the other side, I'll pick up the commentary again.
Now that we've got that meat wedged against the machine, we'll be able to then cut the key off and then use that to proceed. I'm not sure why we couldn't just unhook that joint of meat and cut it. I don't know, but um, made for one hell of a puzzle either way. So we've now got the key. We're just going to backtrack through the door that we came in. Kai's no longer there, but they've moved out into the corridor, which you'll soon see. There'll be a little bit of dialogue with Kai. And then we're going to use this key that we just got from the abattoir section on this door behind us. And that's going to move us into the kitchen. Kitchen puzzles, relatively easy. Not too much involved in this one. So we want to open the door, head on inside. And then on the left hand side is the fridge. You don't need to pick this recipe up really, but I am. There's a fridge on this left hand side. Open the second door and I'd pick up the valve. We're then going to go back to the cook, cooker hobs or gas hobs, insert it into the mains valve here, and we'll be able to turn the gas on. To open the door, we need to turn the stoves on in a particular order. So this left-hand side stoves, we want to turn both the ones on the right-hand side on. And then this right-hand side stove, the two left and the very bottom right, and that should open the door. Moving on into the next room is some sort of electrified holding cell. There will be a puzzle in here that can potentially get Kai killed. So I will do a manual save before we initiate it. But first of all, there's a little bit of dialogue and a couple of cutscenes before we get there. So head into the holding cell. Just squeeze past Kai. And then there'll be a brief cutscene here. And then what we're going to do is walk into the room at the very back. There'll be a computer that we can interact with and we need to guide Kai through by stepping on the right panels. If Kai stands on the wrong panels, they will die because they've got that kind of electrified bracelet on their wrist. However, it won't affect us. So we can walk through safely through here. But as Kai approaches, they're going to get a quick zap and launch them back into the room. Don't worry, they're not dead yet. After this cutscene's played out, we're then going to do a manual save as there is a little bit of decision making, which may potentially get Kai killed. So do a save, make sure it's slot two. We want slot one to be pristine, ready for our second playthrough. I'm going to pick up the solutions here, but it's not necessary. If you're following along with my guide, you can just jump straight onto the console and start playing. So as we load up the computer, we're going to get a three by four grid of various squares which replicate the squares within the room and i'm going to do my best to guide you through the correct steps to step on so after this cutscene's played out we'll then need to interact with the console one last time and then you'll have the option to either start or give yourself a little bit more time we're just going to say yes and then we're going to guide kai's dot around to the exit so first of all, we've got to go up one. So Kai's in the middle left at the moment. We're going to send them up one and then right and then down and then down again and then right twice. So right and then right again. And that is the first solution done. The next one. Kai should be in the same spot on the very left hand side. We're going to go down to the C. Then across to the right to the D. And then up to the A. The right to the C. Up to the B. And then right to the D. And that's solution number two. We've got one more left to go. So starting again in the left hand side. We're going to go directly right to the heart. And then we're going to go up to the club. Right to the spade. Down to the heart. Down to the club. And then right to the spade. And that should complete the third part of the puzzle. And Kai is saved. That's all the survivors now saved. However, there is a little bit more that needs to be done before we get the endings. So I'm going to let this cutscene play out and I'll discuss what we need to do next.
As the cutscene finishes, we'll get the achievement popped for Corp and saving Kai. We want to head outside this room now into the main hall. The doorbell will ring. As we approach the front door, we'll find a box and we'll get another cutscene playout. If you'd failed to save all the survivors, this is the point where you get the bad ending. However, we have saved everybody, so we're going to go on through to the good and the perfect endings. Because there is three in total, and we're going to do kind of the good endings both at the same time, as there is a point that you can do a manual save and get both of them. So we're going to let this cutscene play out, and then we'll discuss how to get the true and good ending. So now sent into the depths via the lift, you're going to go on through into this next room. There's nothing in here to interact with. There is one puzzle in the middle of this room. First of all, we need to interact with this note before we can start the puzzle. The very back of the room on the bench is some toy swords. Make sure you pick those up, the ones here with the red handles. And then we need to press these into the box in the right order, otherwise the box will blow up. So we're going to start with the green fox to start with. We're going to put this at the very bottom where it's you know what's would be. So slot that in the very bottom. The bull is the right hand side just underneath its head. The bottom left for the bird so on its wing here. And then finally the whale is at the very bottom. The clown will pop out to give you a little bit of a shock and we will collect the note within its hand. On the back of the note, it will show you how to get out of the room, which is to interact with the bookcase on the right hand side here. So we're going to go around the back of the clown and interact with this blue book here. Just pull that and we should be able to open the door and escape. As we move out, there'll be a nice big reception area on our left hand side. If you walk towards that, it will trigger another cutscene and all the survivors from upstairs will come down because it's relatively safe. So just head out through here. This is the reception. It'll also update the map with the new location. And everybody should move downstairs. Again, once the cutscene's played out, we'll pick up the commentary again. So everybody's now downstairs in the reception area. We've been given an ID card to get through the next couple of rooms and solve a couple of puzzles. I'm just admiring the views here, grabbing a few refreshments before moving on to our next puzzle. So if you go into these bathrooms, first of all, these are ones that you may miss off the cartographer missable achievement. So make sure that you get the male and female bathrooms walked into, otherwise those can be potentially missed. We're now going to walk into the control room here. Can't use the console just yet because it's not powered up. So if we go to the left hand side here, there's a red cable on the floor. We're going to pick that up and we've got another puzzle to solve. So once we've got the cables, we're going to go over to the servers or the consoles in the right hand side corner here. And this one's a little bit tricky, so just pay attention on what order these need to be in. So the top white one here on the left hand side, we're going to grab one of the data ports here and connect it to the blue one. We're then going to grab one of the slots that are free on the red one on our right hand side here. 
and then place that one to the top left which was white and now blue again so that's going to make it pink and then we're going to grab one of the data connections from the yellow one on our left hand side and connect it to the white one at ground level so just grab this yellow one and connect it to the ground white one here that'll make that yellow and then we're going to grab the red there's only one remaining red and then we're going to connect it to this yellow one at the bottom which is going to make orange so drag that to the yellow to make orange and then we're going to grab the last yellow connection to our left and then drag that up to one of the white slots and then we're going to grab that final yellow and connect it to the blue and that should finish the puzzle that's going to then power up the middle console what I should have done here is then gone over and used the middle console, however I forgot to. So I'm going to wander outside the room. So I should have used it there and then, but for whatever reason didn't. I have however gone outside and gone into these other two rooms to make sure they're marked as being seen or walked into on the map for the cartographer achievement. So I've walked into this office that's been ticked off and then there's a meeting room here. The meeting room you do need to walk through as the door opens at the other side when you do turn on the power, which I haven't done yet. It's now clicked and I'm going back. So we go back into this main room, control room, and we're going to turn on the console. Once that's powered up, the door in the meeting room is now open and we can proceed through. So there's only a couple of rooms left to go into to get the full cartographer achievement. If you've been following along with the guide, you should have had them all up to now. So we're in the director's office. We need to pick up the TV remote and use it twice on the TV. The first one will turn the TV blue and then the second one will show you which picture or frame to click on. And it is this little picture over here just above the sofa. That's going to enable us to leave the, the game or get the good ending. However, we're not going to do that just yet. We want to get the true ending first. So we're going to head back to Torres. We're going to have a lengthy conversation with her. Be careful as you're skipping through this, because if you do hit yes, you will proceed to leave the game. So just take this one nice and slow. And then you'll be given the option to leave, yes or no. We're just going to hit no. This is then going to give us the opportunity to go through and complete the game to get the true ending. So once the dialogue's played out, what I am going to do is do a manual slave and put that into slot two. So once we've done the true ending, we can load into slot two and get the good ending. So now the dialogue's played out, like I said, just going into start, save, slot two. Make sure that you don't save it in slot one, which should still be the lounge. That's going to give us the opportunity on playthrough two, just to whiz through some of the start and not have to play those initial puzzles again. Now that we've got a save, we're going to head back through the sub basement entrance, through this clown box puzzle, and then through this door. For whatever reason, we've gone round in a loop. It's intentional, don't worry. We're going to turn around again go back through the sub-basement entrance, research and develop, and this time it should be a lift. And then we're going to press the button and head upstairs. This is then going to take us into the cellar section, which we had a cutscene in. And then if you interact with this barrel second from the end, you'll be able to open it up and head on through. This is going to take us into some sort of crypt there's a puzzle within the crypt here which will allow us to go a little bit deeper into the vault. So first of all, we well, we don't need to pick these statues up, but I'm going to pick them up anyway. You can go straight to the solution if you wish. So on this back wall, there is three columns with the puzzle on it, with dials. We're going to start with the first one on the left. This is kind of a little devil symbol. Next one's a little man and the bottom one is the moon and then the middle dials here we want a triangle with a couple of lines underneath and then a square with a cross underneath and then two triangles kind of intersecting and then on the final one we want the two z's and then a triangle with a squiggly line underneath and then a kind of hashtag on the last one 
that's going to slide this coffin out the way and we can delve a little deeper underground. As we proceed into the next room, it's the final one to map out the cartographer achievement. So if you manage to get that east stairwell, which was behind those lion doors in the main mansion, and make sure you went into the office and the two bathrooms on this level, you should then have all the rooms mapped out. However, for the achievement to pop, you do seem to need to open the map for whatever reason to get the map completed. So as long as you've visited those previous rooms and opened your map within the sealed crypt here, you should get the cartographer achievement pop. We just picked up a handle out of that grave slab there and we're going to put it in this mechanism. That's going to open a door. We'll walk through to a section called the well. We're going to walk down the stairs of the well to the very bottom and there's one final puzzle before we finish the game. So as we come down the stairs here and we take a left, there'll be a large open area with a console. Once we've activated this console, there'll be a number of rings appear around these columns around us. What we need to do is get a laser beam from kind of the entrance to the control pad that we just touched. It needs to come in from all three directions though, so in the front and from the left and right of it. This solution's a little bit tricky to try and word, so you're probably better off watching the video. I've just reset the puzzle back to its default positions here, although there is a little beam of light connecting those two, it is at default, as you should come into it. And then what we need to do is swap a couple of the sigils around and then turn the columns slightly to get the beams all connected. But just follow along with the video, swapping out the sigils that I'm swapping and you should get the solution in no time. Now the puzzle is complete, the bridge will raise. I'm going to follow this pathway to the very end and we'll have a conversation with the mysterious person. From then on we have two, two or three kind of mini puzzles that are reflecting on some of the previous rooms that we've been in. Just completing those and we should go through and get the true ending. So I'll just start speaking up when we get to a couple of the puzzle sections and let this play through. So we're going to have a flashback to the very first puzzle where we saved Torres. Here we're going to do it slightly differently. So although I was trying to marry up the letters on the mirror here to make a word, it's not quite the way to do it this time round. What we're going to do is interact with the painting behind us first of all. And then we're going to marry up the letters on the mirror. And that should solve this little section of puzzle here. Now 
Next we're going to be thrown into the room where we saved Ruth. This one's nice and easy. There's a selection of bone saws on this shelf here. However, we can't pick one up until we interact with the wall that we break through. So examine the wall first and then pick up a bone saw and then interact with the wall again. And that'll make that little cubby hole in the back of her surgery room. We're now in the lab section where we found Kai. No puzzles left to do, thankfully. It's just a kind of a running exercise now. So all we're gonna do is run through to the end of here. Eventually we'll be in a room with a very long staircase heading upwards. If you follow that to the very top, there'll be a lengthy cutscene and we'll get the final achievement pop for getting the good ending and saving the world, of course. Again, I'll pick up the commentary when we come round to reloading our save and try to get the good ending. So once that cutscene's played out and the credits start rolling, you should get the achievement until the bitter end, which is for saving the world. Once the credits are finished playing out, you'll be then thrown back to the main menu screen and we're gonna load up one of our previous saves. So go down to load, and then we're gonna to go to slot two, which should be reception. This is the one we did before just going off and doing the true ending. So load that up. And this one's nice and easy. It's just a case of talking to Torres in front of us. Speak to her and just say, are you ready to leave? Just say yes this time. And you get a similar cutscene play out with everybody ring away. And then you'll get the credits play. As the credits start playing, you will get a group effort achievement pop, which is to save everyone. Once the credits are run through and we're back at the main menu, I'll then quickly talk you through what's needed on your second playthrough to get everybody killed and getting that soul survivor achievement.
Now that we're back at the main menu, we've had the two good endings, we've just got the bad one to do. So go to load, we're going to load up slot one, which should hopefully still be the lounge. If not, if you've accidentally saved over it, you will need to do the tutorial and saving Torres before you get here. So once you do get back to Charles again, what we're going to do is fill the first puzzle. So we're just going to put the same sigil down four times. My inventory looks a little bit weird because I have just rushed to this spot to do this achievement. I haven't loaded it from that previous save as you've just seen. So once you put the four wrong symbols down, we're just going to say yes, we're ready to start the ritual and Charles is going to be swallowed up by the wall. This in turn obviously kills Charles off and then we'll just proceed through to the other members of the group. Slowly going through doing their puzzles and making sure that we do fail it. Don't do it correctly and save them. Kill them all off and then once you get to the section where the doorbell rings and you get given the gun, what you end up doing is shooting Torres and you leave as the sole survivor. So I'm now going to drop the commentary on this video altogether. I'm going to let the rest of this play out. So the last half an hour or so of me just going through and killing everybody. If you do want to follow along with my video guide, you can. Just to show you what I did to get there as quick as possible and kill them all off. And then once you've killed all of them off and got the soul survivor achievement, you should come out the other end and get a full thousand or the platinum trophy for the Tartarus key. If you found this video guide useful, as always, please drop it a like. If you want to see more content from myself in the future, please do subscribe.